now at 11. Cases of the coronavirus are going up in Oregon, but more help is on the way. The new developments on the vaccination effort. The talk of possible new restrictions has some business owners on edge. Find out what some private theater owners are saying about the message this week from Oregon's governor. And Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler is getting an earful from activists in the city. Hear what they say he did to spark peaceful protests this morning. This is KGW News at 11. With coronavirus cases increasing, Oregon and Washington weigh in on using the J&J vaccine. Good evening, I'm Brittany Folgers. This week, the federal government reauthorized the use of the Johnson & Johnson shots. They had stopped for more than a week after 15 people developed rare blood clots. Three of them died, including a woman in Oregon. The state of Washington announced earlier today it will resume giving people the shots, and it seems other western states will follow. A safety review work group for this part of the country says California, Nevada, and Oregon should also continue the use of the Johnson & Johnson shots. Oregon's governor responded by saying she's grateful to be one of the 7 million people protected by the vaccine, and Oregonians can be confident the vaccine is safe and effective. So here's a look at the rise in cases across Oregon. The increase could lead to the return of restrictions. There were eight new COVID uh, related deaths reported in the state today, and there are also at least 830 new and presumptive cases. Governor Brown hinted during a press conference this week, more limitations could be imposed in at least a dozen counties. In the state's vaccination effort, the seven day average is now more than 35,000. The talk of tighter restrictions returning has theater owners concerned. With the Academy Awards tomorrow, this would normally be a big weekend at the movies. Art Edwards checks in with owners struggling to stay in business. To say that the last year has been hard is a complete understatement. Leanne Nakvazil and her family own several independent theaters across the state. They were able to reopen at the end of January, but it hasn't always been smooth going. There were restrictions about the number of people allowed in a theater and whether or not they could sell concessions. It's it's honestly, it's been a yo-yo for the last year of like, you can do this and then you can't do this and then you can do that and then you can do this. And like, we totally get it. And getting films to show has been challenging. The studios aren't wanting to release new things right now because, you know, they got to make their money too. The Joy Cinema and Pub in Tigard stayed closed for nearly a year. They are back open now for limited showings. We limit ourselves uh, more than the state uh, says we have to, for, that we have been since we've reopened. We're just selling like 30 or 40 tickets a show and we could have 100. Um, we just want to be careful. On Friday, Governor Brown talked about moving some counties back into the extreme risk category. Theater owners are worried what that could mean for them. I'm hoping that we won't have to close and uh, that's, I'm sure every business is hoping that. We are one of, you know, how many independent theater owners that are just literally at our breaking point of like, what does the future hold? Theater owners are hopeful they can continue to provide people with an escape. They go there to be in a different world with different people. And, you know, it's I heard someone once say that the movies is their Disneyland because they can't, you know, afford to go to Disneyland. So going to the movies is their way to be in a different world. Art Edwards, KGW News. With below average rainfall this spring and the possibility of a drought this summer, many are already thinking about wildfire season. You can reduce the risk of your home catching fire by clearing brush and keeping de and debris and keeping trees trimmed and moving firewood away from your home. You should also have a plan for evacuation and a go bag with essentials like food, clothing, water and medicine. As wildfires become more frequent, some insurance companies are rethinking coverage in risky areas. Experts say to call and make sure that you're covered. Steve Patterson with NBC News recently reported on wildfires and has a few suggestions. Focus has to be on what happens at a macro state level. So the best answer I could tell you is to maybe write a letter to your congressman saying that we need to do something to combat climate change and do something to clear all this vegetation out so these wildfires have less room to grow and less fuel to burn. 
Experts warn rebuilding after wildfires can be difficult. The price of lumber is high right now and contractors are booked for months. A state of emergency for downtown Portland declared by the mayor will stay in effect until noon Monday because of possible violence in the city. Now, the mayor is facing criticism for remarks about dealing with, uh, with rioters. Crystal Kumwe explains. We must stand together as a community against this ongoing criminal intimidation and violence. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler first declared a state of emergency on Tuesday following the verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial. It allows the mayor to declare a curfew, close streets and other places like parking garages. Our job is to unmask them, arrest them, and prosecute them. People know who these criminals are. On Friday, the mayor are. urged people to report to authorities any illegal looking activity. Contact. He also asked for the public to report license plates or vehicles carrying groups dressed in all black. Deputy Portland Police Chief Chris Davis joins Wheeler in the call for help. But that information could be useful later if people in the same descriptions are involved in criminal activity. Uh, it helps us piece together who was at these events. I am wearing all black. I often wear all black. I will continue to wear all black. On Saturday morning, this group gathered to criticize the mayor's comments. It includes activists, protesters, and community leaders. And so when I read your response, Tevis, what I read was you trying to pull us apart. Amber Boyston is one of the dozens of black Oregonians who drafted an open letter this week aimed at those doing the protesting. It says in part, actions that neither increase solidarity nor broadcast purpose while making the lives of local black communities more difficult or not acceptable. The group says while the letter also talks about concern with police violence, the mayor misused those words in his call to extend the state of emergency. If black people are speaking, I would appreciate it if people would listen to the words that we say and read the words that we say, absorb the words that we say, think on the words that we say, but stop adding your own lens to it. Sometimes you just have to be quiet and listen. Crystal Kumwe, KGW News. New tonight, a small earthquake recorded earlier tonight in the area south of Yakima, Washington. It measured a magnitude of 2.1 just north of the Oregon border around 530 this evening. The seismic activity took place about 11 miles underground. There are no reports of injuries or damage.